No, so I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I don't use a meter anymore. I light off a monitor. I operate off a monitor. All that's changed, but uh, it, it's 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 not worse really for me. I mean, I don't you know I I'm not uh, you know too sentimental about it. I mean, I did like my meter and stuff, but uh, um, but you know the studio system is changing. Like I worked in the playing field in the, in the states that was sort of for, you know films for you know more you know not for teenagers, sort of that middle range dramas. You know that that used to ha exist from 30 to 60 million, which is medium range budgets, um, and those movies in a way have disappeared. You know they either make the big big you know tentpole films, you know like the you know the Batman's and the Iron Man's and the Avengers and all the Marvels, and you know they spend you know up to 250 thousand on those, and and then what has become the more interesting material. Um, had come down to be about 25 million to 20 million when we did Descendants and Sideways. You know, those are Fox Searchlight movies that cost about 20 or 17. And uh, you know, what I'm seeing now and what we're experiencing is that those uh, films are actually coming down now. They're making them now. You know, they went to 12, and you know, like Nebraska is 12, and they make them for eight, and. Uh, and they realize that they can be successful. And you know what, what's happening is the actors want to work on good material. So same as the crew. So you know, then you have really big, experienced cinematographers, for example, suddenly working on small movies because they want to work on a good film. You know, you get um, Chivo after he did Gravity, he just went with Rodrigo Garcia and Ewan McGregor into the desert. They did for you know what two million dollar movie, five weeks in the desert with no lights, and uh, you know because we want to do those movies, but you know often you know we got to sort of find a balance. But but what's happening? The bad, bad part about for for all the young generation, the new uh, people who really should be making those movies are being pushed out by you know us who want to sometimes do those films so that's a little bit you know it's preventing the natural flow of how new talent should enter the industry uh, because uh, but of course you know there are you know there's um, Rachel Morrison who just did Fruitville Station you know that got a lot of attention you know so p people you know um, Reed Morano, um, you know, there are young cinematographers that still make it. I mean, it doesn't mean, you know, there's no no space left for anybody. But yeah, it's it's changing. Everything's changing and you know, we and how we're gonna view movies, that's all gonna change, you know, I guess. Um, I mean people still go to theaters in America, you know, we still have record years and uh, the theaters, you know, they try to step that up, the experience, you know, they they have uh, now they serve cocktails and uh, you know <laughs> I mean you know they have like adult I mean not adult films but you know you where you know you have to be 21 you can drink in the fear they have you know little IMAX shows and stuff so they try to you know of course they ha all the <coughs> viewing uh, systems at home are getting you know I have a pretty good viewing system at home I mean I I go to the movie theaters five times a year maybe I don't know did that answer your question uh, partly. What, what, uh, what part? Um, the, the continuation of the question uh, to satisfy me is connected to your notion to the unions you made earlier. Uh, you said you, you require 30 years. No, no. No, no. I, I, I personally, you know, people ask me how do I get into the film industry. I go, it was, for me, it was, a th I mean, I moved there in 84, 1984. So it's been, you know, it's not the one steps you know it's and it's different for everyone but it's it's a it's a you know it's a big process i mean but you have in unions you got to get into and then you know but the unions are really trying to and it's not a bad thing but they're tr trying to even reach those ultra low you know they have different agreements for different budget levels so you know with um uh, low budget and ultra low budget and uh, so they actually uh, try to uh, almost all films i mean it's in America are union films. Yes, in contrast with Greece, where the organizations in general, not to mention the unions, I mean the Cinematographers Association was, uh, was uh, created legally uh, this year, the Documentaries Association was created last year, 
And uh, I think that's a great weakness for the Greek. I mean, how not how to have a union? Not a, no, the, the the absence of unions. Yeah, for I don't know. I mean, there's an argument. You know, look, the union has become very flexible because you know they have to accommodate this new world and they have to be flexible with you know the pricing and the Greeks do too. I mean, you know, I work I you know I work on com commercials here. I'm shooting one tomorrow, and uh, I direct here and I talk to cameramen here and. And I know, like from some, uh, you know, c camera DPs got together, uh, and they actually made some kind of agreement amongst themselves to stick together, uh, and you know, have certain rules apply. I don't know, you know, how many hours, and then get some overtime and all that. But um, I mean, the union for us is really the main benefits are the health benefits, and that they, we pay into the fringes that the studio pays and stuff. I mean, the rules. Yeah, I mean, the, the rules, even if you're an independent production, you can sort of set the rules. Now, of course, there'll always maybe be people that will work under any conditions, but it's very important that, you know, you guys, you know, don't get, you know, abused and work to, you know, excessive hours past 14 hours, and it's not safe, and it's also not creative. You don't end up doing good work, and, uh, and you know, but yeah, it's a struggle, but, you know, there were high salaries being paid in Greece, and now people are complaining, and I'm not, don't take it personal, I mean, talking about like high-end commercials, but where like a stylist was getting a thousand euros or 1,200 euros a day, which is really, you know, there was sort of a, uh, like a decadence about how like much money they were making, and, 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 and uh, at that time I would go to Belgrade and work with, you know, a very, you know, excellent crews and part, more experienced than technically, uh, better and faster and harder working and and you know that hurt Greece you know and then and, and, I mean of course now there's a problem and you know people I mean I think it's a problem people get so take so long to get paid you know I get paid sometimes eight months after I did the job here it's crazy it's absurd you know so that's a problem but it's a, it's a domino effect you know like I did a Nest, Nescafe campaign and I go but why am I getting paid in eight months that's like a Swiss company <laughs> is Nestle Swiss uh, you know, it's like why? Uh, who's the? Who, and he, you know, and then they explain to me. Well, you know, they're like they say. Well, why would we be the only ones to pay on time? You know, everybody else pays later, so we're going to pay the agency in four months, and then the agency will pay pay the production company in four months, and then the production company will pay the crew and whatever. So that's a, nah. Ah, thanks. Can I, I, I would like to ask about the light, uh, how you use the light on filming and the vision about photography? Well, <laughs> you need light to uh, see, so I know, I don't know, I mean, I use, uh, I like natural light would be, I guess, the answer to that. Uh, uh, I try not to be too stylized. In general, I try the photography to not uh, be too, uh, draw too much attention. You know, if you're talking about a general use of light, uh, I, I want uh, people to uh, watch the story and not get distracted. You know, I'm not very aggressive with light. Um, and, uh, um, you know, I think if somebody comes up to you and says, after the movie, that was incredible lighting or incredible cinematography, then I think the movie is weak, you know, it's a problem. I mean, best is if somebody comes up to you and says, that was a great movie, you know, so. Ella, hi. Faden, could you please talk a little bit about maybe um, early influences, uh, both films and cinematographers and kind of what you got from it whether it was knowing you i know it's not technique it's spirit and and things like that but just talk a little bit yeah. about that i mean I, I grew up in uh you know germany so uh you know my first exposure was through television and, and films american films i came uh, westerns and uh, uh, american cinema um but i guess once i really got into uh recognizing Cinema is not just an entertainment uh, form. Uh, was probably with 
uh, you know, very early German New Wave, uh, Fassbinder, Wenders, uh, Herzog, and, and simultaneously with French, you know, uh, I mean, uh, and Italian, but, you know, Godard and uh, Truffaut, and, uh, you know, there's some movies that really made, you know, strong, uh, I mean, I would say, you know, Robbie Miller, who's a German, a Dutch cinematographer, uh, uh, the way, um, you know, the, the use of natural light, and, and, and same with Raoul Coutard, um, 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 and, and that stuck with me forever, I think. I mean, you know, because I started uh, also not in the studio system. I didn't really work up through, you know, we started with low budget. So I was looking at, you know, things I could uh, do myself and, and without the equipment. So uh, I always liked stripped down cameras. I never liked zooms. Um, you know, it was uh, natural light, finding the natural light, bounces. Um, and, uh, and those are all things, you know, I had the uh, honor to experience Robbie Miller on set, you know, I did a documentary on Charles Bukowski and while he was doing Barfly and that was very interesting and, uh, and uh, yeah, so, but I guess, you know, I was, also I came from still photography, so, you know, it was a, a lot, for me it's a lot of composition and that's why Raoul Coutard, like in this film Le, Mé Le Mépris, the contempt with, um, uh, was you know the first time I really became aware of uh, okay there's somebody you know I wasn't just watching a movie I was you know at the time I was doing stills and it was these very graphic shots and with primary colors and the symbolism of com colors and uh, you know I, uh, that's the first time I wrote down the name was Raul Kutar's name and uh, 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 I go, oh, you know, you can do what I'm doing with still photography. You know, I also can move a camera and I can tell a story. And, uh, and I go, that's something I would like to do. I didn't really know how to do it or how to go about it. But, uh, you know, went to America. And then uh, luckily I was, um, based on my still photography, I was hired to do a short film and, and sort of trans transitioned into cinematography uh, through that. Was there a film in your mind where you kind of form and content for you? You you, were, you found a place and you you found your technique to tell a particular story that was influenced by this, or was it a gradual process? It's pretty much gradual. I mean, um, you know, I did a bunch of movies about strippers being killed, and uh, you know, so but we did go see. You know, while I was doing Strip to Kill Two, we did go see um, uh, Last Emperor. And then Storar came and talked to AFI, and, uh, and you know we went back and you know we lit everything like golden like that, and uh, you know so we were influenced, but, but it was always like in increments, and you know, the, uh, but uh, you know there are always sort of visual milestones where you see something and go, oh, that's uh, something you know I uh, I think that's something new I haven't seen, and I, I can't really say, uh, you know, obviously Deakins, and you know what or things Chiva has done or. You know, we all look at each other's work, and but it's not one. It's a, you know, and the language changes. It goes for different trends and fashions. You know, um, but you know, it's great when you see a movie from, um, you know, t t two or three decades ago, and it really holds up. You know, those are the movies. I mean, I watched Conformist. That just recently again. It should, you know. So, uh, uh, I try. You know, I'm not so conscious of the trends and. You know, the colors. I mean, I was doing a telecine in Greece, and my camera operator, he says, was with me, and I was doing something, and he goes, oh, what you're doing is such an American look, you know. Uh, so I guess, and then I do look at, you know, in Europe, I think it's been doing much more so pastel and less aggressive sort of coloring, and uh, but I think it's a trend right now. I think it comes from dog tooth a little bit, and you know, that thing, so. And that's the problem a little bit, you know, I want the Greek cinema not all to think they have to like do this same movie now, you know, like just because it's getting some international recognition, you you know, you can still, you know, have different storytelling techniques. Uh, I mean, I like Doctor very much, you know, but uh, you know, I, I just don't want everyone to speak really stylized all the time, you know. So. Perdona, uh, what is your reaction? You, you made a traditional movie, like an American. What is your reaction on uh, the high-end cameras now? They are, you know, they are getting very close to the low-end cameras. Uh, many people are shooting with Canon 5Ds, and what's your reaction of this movement? It's it's fine. I mean, I'm worried a little bit, you know, that people think. 
you know, just because you can shoot with uh, any kind of light doesn't mean, you know, that's, I mean, you still have to shape the light and you still have to find the appropriate light for the story and you still have to, uh, you know, it's not just about getting, no, again, depends on the movie, you know, Cassavetes would probably be shooting with a 5D. Uh, and uh, you know what? I'm talking about hardware wise, you know, from the point of view of hardware. I mean, would you shoot uh, with a Canon 5D or with a. I have, I mean, I have. have. I did the I did a movie and then I, uh, I actually um, couldn't uh, get a permit to shoot in Santa Monica Pier on the thing, so we went on it with a 5D and I did that sequence. I couldn't get a permit to shoot in the uh, metro and I went on it and did a scene and. My actors were wired, and you know, so it depends on the movie and on the technique. And you know, I think in general it's great because it allows filmmakers to make movies that they couldn't have done before. And, and you know, basically with this and the, the camera, you can have a movie that can premiere at Sundance, you know, or go to any festival. And and, and documentaries, like I remember when Ben Benders, you know, I did post. I helped them do on Buena Vista Social Club and. You know, he had planted all these, in addition to, I don't know what the camera was at the time, not very high-end, uh, th three CCD, or, you know, but he had some little, the little Sonys that he stuck in the band, and, and you know, he's, you know, we, we looked at it, projected, it's the first time I saw something digitally projected, and it threw me off a little bit, but, you know, once the story, I mean, once you watch these people, it's like you don't care anymore, and it doesn't matter, and, like, faces doesn't matter if it's out of focus or... Uh, I mean, faces of a movie, not in general. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, the grain, or you, you, it becomes part of the language. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. I mean, I, you know, David Lean would probably be not using red cameras. He would probably still try to shoot film, and so many filmmakers, you know. George Clooney wants to shoot film. I mean, Alexander wanted to shoot film. We couldn't shoot black and white film stock because you know, the studio required us to have a color version as well of Nebraska, which we have, and you know, so. Um, but I embrace everything, I mean, I, and I don't really, I mean, what I've been saying recently, people ask me, how do you keep up? I don't keep up with the technology. Like, when I have a movie, uh, which might be, you know, in September of this year or in January of next year, that's when I'm gonna see what tools are available, uh, what, first of all, what do I wanna do? Then I go, oh, this could work for you. Uh, these all won't work, so I'll just test that. I'll do my own test. I'll see what it is. And, you know, I bought an Alexa. I bought the first Alexa five years ago, or three, four, whenever, the first one, because I tested it myself. And I go, okay, whatever happens, this camera will always be good enough for me to shoot a, a, a feature on it. I don't care where it goes. And in, in general, you know, I mean, the lensing, and the, as a lot of people know, you know, everything is getting sharper. The master primes, now they have master anamorphics. Um, <clears throat> you know, everything is getting sharper and sharper. 4K, 48 frames, uh, you know, where people like, who wants to see faces with that kind of the resolution? So, uh, you know, if anything, you know, we've talked about it. We did the Hollywood Reporter roundtable with uh, Bruno de Bunel and. Uh, Sean Bobby and all these people, and you know, if anything, we're pulling. I'm pulling things back, and you know, I mean, you know, I don't want anything higher quality. I don't want anything sharper, and I don't want higher resolution. And um, you know, I've used old lenses, and uh, I used, you know, on Nebraska, you know, lenses from glass from the 70s. You know. Well, I have many questions to do, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but we have to go on with schedule. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now uh, we have the projection of the film Notebook in which uh, Christian Berger contributed as a director of photography. He is going to introduce the film now and we start with the projection right away. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.